Galen and trying to understand what I'm all about, um, I'm, I feel a certain sense of unity. And I know there's brain systems and all of that. But you've talked about selves, that understanding what ourselves are critical to understand what we are as human beings. How do we begin to define selves? What are the issues? And, and why is what something that seems obvious to everyone is really a deep philosophical issue? Well, I think one of the most striking differences among people is that some people, when they look back to the past or to the future, think, that's me back there five years, 10 years, 15 years, and sort of somewhat more vaguely, but the same into the future. You know, I'm the guy who's going to need a pension or something. Whereas other people live in a completely different way. Um, they look back six months and they think, that's not, I don't really find myself there. And they, and they really don't think that much about the future. Now, we're all human beings and we're all born and grow up and, and, and eventually die. So we're all the same, we're all the same in that respect. But you have this different experience of, of being in time. Some people are, as it were, long-term people, and some people are short-term. And that's where I find it useful to use the word selves as opposed to the word just human being or person, because, uh, once again, you know, we're all, as, as human beings or persons, we all just have a life. But somehow, so selves, we seem to, it seems that we can vary. So... But of course, we often use the word person when we say that, when we think about that aspect. We say, I'm not the same person that I was. Uh, so maybe the word person is not helpful. But so, that's one thing that I'm trying to, to so get to use at. the word self to, to have a, a very um, clear definition of something that is, uh, is a, if we person or human being are, are more general. But this, the self gives us this, this sense of, of, uh, of uh, temporal unity. Yeah, it's just that. Look, I mean, the word self is used in every imaginable way. I mean, I've got, I've made a collection of sort of 50 <laughs> different uses at one point. Uh, I've just chosen it to use it that way to bring out this interesting fact about very different experiences of time. That was my starting point. Anyway. Okay, so where then did it go from? Well, it, it actually, I have to say that, I, I mean, I followed a pretty uh, sort of academic philosophical route. And I know, what, you know, it did indeed lead me to the to the idea that if you really want to say that there are things, entities, called selves, which are different from human beings, you may have to finish up saying they're very short-lived things. But so, so what I, does that mean, short-lived? Well, <laughs> I started off saying maybe three seconds, and I thought, oh, maybe less than, less than a second. And, and, <laughs> and then I even put forward the possible view that maybe they're as long as the Planck time, which is every <laughs> self lost 10 to the minus 43 of a second. <laughs> It's just a sort of flashing um, series. So, so that, that, in a sense, you're trying to define the now. Is that a uh, now in, in, in a physical sense? Well, I, I suppose so. But there is a, you do have to distinguish between, as it were, the now of physics, insofar as they'll allow such a thing, yes. and the lived now, the, the so-called specious present. Okay. Uh, there's a very good example of how that, how, the way in which that's longer than just a a slice at an instant and seeing a shooting star is a very good example because you seem to see the whole thing in the present in some irreducible way right right and so so, so you're in essence trying to measure that or yeah that, that, but that's that there are a lot of themes going on here and actually they're difficult to integrate uh, but that's that was one of the things i was thinking of when I, so, so, so what are the implications? I mean, let, let's say I, I go along with you and, and the self lasts a third of a second or three seconds or, you know, that's a, you know I, I can live with that, that bracket of time. W what are the implications of that? Well, I suppose one thing to say is... Is that, that the only thing that's real during that time? Yeah, I, I, I really don't want to support this view very much. <laughs> uh, I'm quite happy with the idea that if you want to distinguish the self from the human being, you can think of it as a brain system in your head that has fairly long-term existence. Uh, what I'm, what's interesting, I think, is in the way different people live time. And, I mean, you know, time for confession. I, I am someone who is like this. I, even I look back a minute, I just don't feel that I'm there. Mm -hmm. And other people just don't believe me. And then they say, well, you must be a very immoral person in that case because <laughs> you're never going to feel responsible for what you did. <laughs> so there are lots of problems there. Uh, and I, people are very different. 
And I call the long-termers the diachronic people and the short-termers the episodic people. And I think if you look at your, look at, think about your friends for a bit, you'll see that they do differ in this way. Um, and I should say, if you find that your partner is the other kind of person, don't worry, because it doesn't, you, you, diachronic people, long-termers can get on perfectly well with short-termers. <laughs> in fact, it can be a good thing. Um, so I slightly changed the question there. But, That's okay. I um, mean, uh, but is this difference between short and long-term people, is that something fundamental in human nature? Or is that just another personality quirk? D d does the differentiation yeah. dig deeper into the yeah. fundamental reality of this psychological unity that we yeah. feel? And I think that what I'm claiming really is that this is what's called a, a, an individual difference. Um, you know, psychology studies has a whole field called individual difference, and I think this is one that isn't looked at enough. I think people vary. Uh, that said, so I, th I think it's yeah, it's a fundamental inter -dif individual difference which may have a genetic basis. That said, I think it can also be massively influenced by culture, uh, experience, trauma, and so on. Do you differentiate between self and person? What what is a person? Oh, and what these is words, a self? these words really are. Very difficult to handle. I don't, um, for the purposes of this discussion, I'm inclined not to. I'm inclined to differentiate between self or person or personality, who you most, who you really are in some everyday sense from human being, because the human being is a clear biological category. Mm -hmm. It goes from life to death. Mm -hmm. um, the self or person. So we're all human beings, and we all know we're human beings, and we all know that that's what we most fundamentally are. At the same time, we think of ourselves as things that don't necessarily last from birth to death. Mm. Most of us, I think, think don't really find themselves when they look back 10 years into the past. A, a human being who's in a, uh, a permanent vegetative uh, coma, mm. is that person a self? Um, if it's... I, I, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I mean, I can if they can be... You've raised a very... You know, controversial case because it turns out that some of these people are aware and conscious. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Um, but, so I would say, in that case, they are. If they can be woken up, or by some future medical mm. procedure, if the potential is there, yes. If the potential's gone, no. What are uh, some core characteristics of self? Well, I think I need to bring it to your. Uh, one thing it's worth saying is that we are talking on two levels, and it's very d difficult to integrate them. One is the metaphysical level. You know, what are they? How long do they last? The other is the experiential level. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How long do you feel they last? Mm -hmm. um, so, okay, the, but if you ask what are the core characteristics of self, well, the first one is easy. Um, <clears throat> you're a subject of experience. You okay. are engaged in mental activity. Um, you've got to be single in some way. doesn't mean you can't be conflicted. Um, and, and you're some sort of entity. That's, that's vague, but you're not just a property. Self isn't just a property of a human being. Mm -hmm. It feels like a thing in mm -hmm. some way. So mm -hmm. that would be a sketch. Mm -hmm. um, and so from that sketch, um, you go from a, the definition of self to a, um, a sense of the timing of self, how long that lasts? Is that, is that, a, is that uh, a step you make? I think in the end, you have to treat those two issues separately. So um, I guess for most purposes, I'm happy to say, think of the self as a complex brain system that, that persists for a long time. But that's compatible with feeling feeling, you know, I wasn't really there a year ago. <laughs> or someone else feeling they were there when they were four and they still remember being disappointed by their birthday present. <laughs>